My entitled manager is stealing all the tips from all the servers at the restaurant I work at. But after hearing everybody complain about not getting their tips on time, as well as their paychecks not reflecting that pay difference, I decided to do some investigating and take things into my own hands. Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that I've worked in restaurants for my entire adult life, and I've seen just about every single tipping arrangement you could even imagine. From tip jars split between employees by shift, to serving tables with tip outs for bussers, bartenders, and other people involved, or even digital tips spread throughout checks exactly by the hours that you worked. If you can think of it, I've probably experienced it. In December, I became a manager at a chain corporation that does low amounts of business at this particular location. Right now, it's just me, the franchise owner who just bought the location in November, and about eight other part-time employees, and it's mostly younger, high school, first job type of people. It's a very small staff. According to the younger staff, they used to see on their paychecks their hourly wage and hours worked, as well as a separate section for credit card tips. Well, ever since the new owner took over, those credit card tips have not appeared on their checks, only their hourly wage. Since starting my position, for the most part, I have completely taken over the back of house and kitchen operations. Although, instead of actually logging an order or an inventory account into a computer myself, he simply has me record the order on paper, and he inputs the order himself. I have no access to any of the manager functions on our back of house systems, besides being able to print labels for food items. In terms of cash handling, I tend to work in the morning, so I have only been responsible for making sure the drawer is counted and balanced at the start of the shift, but either he or another employee has always handled the checkouts. He instructs employees to simply get the drawer balanced to about $200, and then any and everything more than that is the deposit to be put in the cash out report and cash in the safe. And trust me, this detail is going to be very important later on. Now, meanwhile, for weeks now, I have had several conversations with employees about tips, and they're wondering where they go. And frankly, most of them seem confused and slightly upset about it, but haven't said anything to him or felt like they could do anything about it. However, our minimum wage just raised to $15, so they all just got a raise by default, so I think they're just distracted and happy about that. Despite that raise, these employees have not been receiving any of the credit card tips that customers leave for months. And mind you, this is a fairly well-known and nationwide chain. I have been conflicted about what to do about this and I've started to blatantly tell some customers and they've even told others. But when speaking to the owner, I'm focused on making a good impression on my boss so I don't bring it up. But instead, I just have a long conversation about the needs and the status of the kitchen. I've been struggling for a while and the job has been a blessing. Even for the bad pay and stolen tips, I can't afford to lose it. But I also want to do the right thing and make sure these employees get their tips. But tonight, I decided to take things into my own hands though. He tasked me with coming in to close the store for him three nights this week, which means I was responsible for the checkouts. When I counted the drawer and separated the deposit, I entered the deposit amount and printed out the checkout report. On the report, it shows the following categories. Declared cash, expected cash, tips, deposit, and cash over and short. And then underneath is a full list of each individual credit card tips for that day. So clearly, on these reports, they account for and separate the credit card tips out for the employees, yet none of them see any of that and are blindly adding the tips to the cash deposit because the owner has instructed them that anything and everything overbalancing the drawer goes into the deposit. So instead of doing that, I separated the tips amount from the deposit, checked the labor report to see the exact hourage of each employee that worked today, and divided the cash tips up between each employee based on their hours work for that day. Their tips are sitting in name baggies in the office that I will give to them when they come in. It is their money after all. Now, I don't know how this trend will continue or what will happen when the owner returns on Thursday, but I am hoping he will be empathetic. I have taken this job extremely serious and operated with complete integrity for his business and will always continue to do so, but if that costs me my job in the end, I don't know exactly how to proceed. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Before we go any further, the original poster actually has an update. Here's exactly what they had to say. So fast forward to the next day, and I spoke with my family and friends for a long time today, getting their opinions on everything. And I even spoke anonymously with the Department of Labor about what to do while giving little details besides the state I work in just so I could decide my actions carefully. Unfortunately, according to the Department of Labor, if I file an official complaint, it will take three to four weeks to process to the higher-ups and they will make a decision on its validity first and then, if it's valid, basically choose whether they have the resources to pursue this and 
send someone out to our location. Or if they decide they don't have the resources, they will simply advise me to seek a private attorney to represent me in a case against the business. Now, sadly, I can't afford a private attorney to take this anywhere, and I suspect the reason their resources are divided so thin is because the minimum wage was raised to $15 an hour this month. And cases such as these are popping up all over the place as business owners shrewdly adapt. But hopefully this all goes well because trust me, I am feeling very anxious. Yeah, that's an awful thing for that owner to do because seriously, the way they're acting is completely out of line. Like they're literally lying to their employees and taking all the tips. So the fact that you went in there and tried to make things right, in my opinion, is a great thing. And hopefully you could be the cause of some kind of change in this restaurant because stealing tips from your employees is such a low thing to do. And honestly, this needs to change sooner than later. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for telling my in-laws that if they want a grandchild, then they should give my wife her inheritance now, just so we could afford to have a child in our lives. Here's what happened. So basically, the title says it all. My in-laws want their only child to start pumping out grandchildren. Now, my wife is 28 years old years old and just finished her PhD, so she wants to get established in her career before we start having a family. My in-laws know how much money I make, and they know that we could live comfortably off of my earnings. But that isn't what my wife wants. She has worked her butt off to get where she is, and she wants to reap the rewards of her hard work. She also says that once she is working, then I can cut back on my hours as a welder, and I can actually relax. I have been working since I was 15 years old, so literally half my life. I make a very good living in return for a lot of fairly hard work and I have supported my wife with her education. She will graduate without any student loans. We have a house and she has a good car. I mean, we have a good life and we want a few more years alone before we start our family. But unfortunately, over Christmas, the in-laws just wouldn't drop it. But eventually, I finally snapped. I said that if they wanted grandchildren, then they could reimburse us for her education. They could further pay for her salary that she would give up and when she returned to work, they could pay her the difference between what she could have earned and her entry-level position. They could also pay for a nanny so my wife could work. Or they could just back off and wait for us to be ready. Well, they said that they couldn't afford all of that. But I asked them how they expected us to afford it. I said that if it really was what they wanted, they could just give her the inheritance that would be coming her way now instead of later. Well, when I said that, they got all offended and said that it is not hers until they don't need it anymore. My wife asked me to drop it and she has tried dozens of times to explain to her parents as to why we are deciding to wait, but they just ignore her. They ignore what we want for our lives. Well, ever since Christmas, they have been very cold to us. They seem to think that I was a rude jerk for pointing out the cost of what they were asking for. A lot of her family agree with them that I went too far in asking them to pay if they wanted a grandchild. And honestly, I kind of need to know, am I the jerk in this scenario? Because at this point, I am seriously unsure of what to do. No, I don't think you're the jerk at all. I think the in-law in this situation were really out of line. They were acting obnoxious about your wife getting pregnant, and this is in a way that was a lot more intrusive than I would personally feel comfortable with. Like, I can understand, like, the occasional comment of, like, hey, when are we gonna have grandkids, or something like that, but it sounds like this was way more intense than it should have been. And that's just not fair for you or your wife. Also, the life plan that you guys have makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. She literally just got her PhD, and she wants to get a job before she has kids. Like, if I went through all that hard work and then all of a sudden had a kid out of nowhere that prevented me from getting a job in that field, I would be pretty disappointed that I don't have time to work on my craft. So no, I don't think you're the jerk for basically putting them in their place because you shined a very bright light on the way they're acting towards you guys. And hopefully, as a result, their attitude eases up in the future. I got fired twice in a row with very little to no explanation. And after racking my head and trying to figure out if I did something wrong, I am left seriously confused. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I've worked in the restaurant industry as a server for several years. I've had few to no problems and was valued by my employers. Recently, I moved to New York City where I trained with one restaurant for two weeks and opened with them. But then two days later after opening, they fired me. It was super out of left field and I was not expecting it at all. Throughout the training, I mastered the menu and most days they praised me. They said it was both due to not needing people and my performance. I asked them if they could provide any insight as to where I fell short so I could implement changes in my next position, but they were never really able to provide me with any
any of this information. I got a new position, worked there for a few weeks, and an incident happened where some entitled woman wanted to stay past their time at the table, and this is when we had a reservation coming in. But when I politely asked them if they could move to the bar, they talked to the owner and I was fired again. So the same thing happened. They called and they fired me, and I asked why, and they said the exact same thing, and when I asked if there was anywhere that I fell short, they alluded that there were some things, but again, they didn't give me any specifics. I even asked them several times, just wanting to know where I needed to improve to prevent this from happening again. So at this point, I'm really just trying to figure out if there is something that I am not thinking of that is causing this to happen. Finding jobs here is a nightmare, plus the training periods where you're hardly even getting paid. I'm confident that it is not revolving around my personality. I'm very kind and I'm accommodating, and I got along great with all of my coworkers. I never missed any shifts, and I was always on time. Plus, I'm 100% sober, so that is definitely not an issue. I also never butt heads with anyone and very rarely messed up any orders. Of course, in being new to any restaurant, there were some growing pains, but nothing out of the ordinary. The only thing I can think of is maybe that they were looking at the sales or something like that. Not that I think mine were low, I just can't fathom any other reason. Also, why would there be something that they all refuse to tell me? It is honestly so strange, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So this really does sound like an awful situation, and I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. It doesn't sound like you did anything wrong with, like, work performance or anything like that, but I think it really was just, like, a matter of, like, the stars aligning against you. Like, for the first place, I'm willing to assume they just hired too many people, and you're just one of the people that got the short end of the stick. And sure, that definitely sucks sometimes, but unfortunately, that is just something that happens. As for the second place, I think you really should have brought that to a manager, even though in my opinion, I don't think you did anything wrong. So I think regardless, I wouldn't let this shake you up too much because I really think these are just freak accidents and that they're not connected in any kind of way. Because if you really are doing all the positive things that you're mentioning, then eventually you'll find a job that will treat you right, which will hopefully make all of these experiences worth it in the end. My boyfriend of four years has ghosted me after I was in a car accident. And after five days of dealing with him not contacting me, I'm now wondering if I should contact him first. Because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My boyfriend and I of four years got into a bit of a silly argument the other day and went to bed not talking. We currently don't live together and the next morning I woke up to a long apology text message from him. I texted him back accepting his apology and apologizing as well. Minutes later, I was involved in a car accident as a passenger in a vehicle. I was lucky enough to be able to walk away from the scene, but it was a very, very close call. It was extremely traumatic for me and I went to the hospital shortly after with my mom. I called my boyfriend before arriving at the hospital to let him know what was happening. He couldn't believe what I was telling him and expressed how grateful he was that I was still alive. Hours later, as I'm arriving back home from the hospital, he called me to check in. I missed his first call but answered on the second one two minutes later. We were on the phone together for less than three minutes. As I was explaining the situation to him, I was stuck. I was trying to get out something that the guy at the hospital said, referring to the doctor or the nurse that saw me at the hospital, but my boyfriend swears he heard me say the hot guy at the hospital. He then wouldn't listen to me and he began talking over me, saying things like, what hot guy at the hospital? You messed up and you're tripping over your words. You might not have meant to, but you definitely said hot guy at the hospital. At that point, I got fed up that I couldn't even get a word in and I loudly said as he was speaking over me, I'm going to hang up now. And then I did exactly that. Seconds afterwards, he sent me a text message saying the following. How are you going to say the hot guy at the hospital and then hang up on me? Whatever, feel better soon. Now, I'm not going to quote the entire exchange, but it continued with me calling him a jerk for treating me like this after the day I had just had. I told him that I was mentally and physically in so much pain and that there was no hot guy at the hospital and I didn't even say that. He said I was gaslighting him and that lately I've been acting all and rude towards him. He said for me to have a good day and to feel better and that he's not dealing with any of this garbage. Well, it's been about five days now and we still have not talked. He hasn't checked on me at all and I'm pretty confident he hasn't asked any of my family or friends how I'm doing either. Now, to be very clear, there was no hot guy at the hospital. I honestly just fumbled my words. So do I contact him first or do I continue to wait for him to contact me? What should I do? Your boyfriend sounds awful. First of all, he's really not being sympathetic of you getting out of the hospital, and he's also basically ignoring the fact that you were in a really bad accident. And instead, he's focusing on something 
something you didn't even say. Like you very clearly stumbled your words and it's honestly not that big of a deal. So for him to hyper focus on this one thing that you didn't even say and that you very clearly articulated, no, that's not what I meant, in my opinion, is a giant red flag and seriously is so uncalled for. It's also ironic how he's like, oh man, you're gaslighting me. When in reality, he's the one doing that to you. He's making you think like you actually said something that you didn't. Also, he could try to catch you in some kind of lie. But there is no lie. You're just trying to tell him exactly what's going on. His action also kind of makes me believe that he was almost looking for a reason to be mad at you. Like maybe he was trying to find some kind of excuse to blame you for the relationship or something like that. I mean, I don't know. If I was with someone for four years and they said something by accident, I would hopefully know that person long enough to be like, oh, okay, they didn't mean it like that. Because seriously, this guy sounds like a narcissist and he sounds incredibly toxic. And in my opinion, you do not deserve to be treated like that in the slightest. My entitled neighbors demand that I give them access to the lake behind my house, as they claim it's their right to get to the lake whenever they want, regardless of if I own the property or not. And I'm honestly so annoyed by all of these people coming to my door that I'm now at a loss and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, last year I purchased a property from the estate of a couple who owned it for about 50 plus years. As they got older, they spent less and less time there, and by the time they passed away, they hadn't lived on the site for almost a decade. The property is heavily wooded with lake access from the back of the lot, and it was in need of some serious, tender loving care. Because of the woods and the distance between the lots, I didn't expect to see much of my neighbors, but at first I had people stopping by all the time, telling me how great it was that I was cleaning up and renovating the property, which I thought was awesome. I work from home, so it was nice to see people living reasonably around me. So this was all fine and good until the last steps, pouring a concrete pad from my van and finishing up the fencing. I hadn't moved in yet, but once the extra driveway and pad were added, I parked my van. When I returned for the final move-in, there was a massive gouge down the length of it as if someone had squeezed another vehicle by or dragged something else large by it. But anyways, I've moved myself and my dog in, and because of the dog and the incident with the scratch van, I decided to close the gates. Now, by doing so, I cut off access to the lake through my property, and it appears the neighbors have been using my entryway and side yard to get down to the water for a while. And this is because the old owners were never here to care about it. I started getting notes and knocks on the door about the problem I had suddenly caused. Now, I don't mind the occasional neighbor kid knocking on the door to cut through, but this was absolutely nonstop. I'm not kidding, like three to four groups a day, and they were not always terribly polite about it. I was even asked to move my van and vehicle so people could back up boats down the drive, and I'm now assuming that's how my van got gouged. Now, I start by explaining I have a dog and the normal reasons for having a fence, but instead, I have been met with some pretty intense criticism that I'm changing how things have always worked around here. The last straw for me was people opening the gate on their own and then getting upset that my dog was loose in the yard. I finally acted by putting up a no trespassing sign, a sign indicating that the dog was in the yard, as well as locks and an intercom by my doorbell so when people ring, I can tell them that I'm working and not have to come down to the door five times a day. Even though the summer season has come and gone, I'm still getting a steady barrage of notes and voicemail messages telling me that access to the lake is grandfathered in as the previous owners allowed it and it's been going on forever. These letters and voicemails are coming from two houses specifically, a woman in her 50s and a couple about the same age. They claim they represent the rest of the neighborhood as well as the homeowner association. Which, by the way, when I purchased my property, there wasn't a single thing about neighborhood covenants or an actual organized homeowners association. Sometimes the letters and the voicemails take on a more formal approach. Other times, they're just informing me of how bad of a person I am for ruining the neighborhood. My attorney assures me this claimed easement is absolutely not a thing, but these are people I'll presumably be living nearby for a long time, and I would prefer to be at least on neutral terms. So is there a way for me to deal with this that I might be missing? Because at this point, I honestly don't know what to do. Honestly, your neighbors sound awful. Like, they seriously assume just because they've been trespassing on the old owner's property for how long now? What, 10 years? They can now have that supposed right given back to them with a new owner? Like, what is going on here? There is literally a new owner of the property. And if the original poster says, no, you can't go through my yard to get to the lake, then that's that. Find another way to get down there. If it really was grandfathered in that they should have access, then that probably should have been explained when you bought the property. Like, they would have straight up told you, hey, you can get this house, but people have a legal right to drive through your yard and go down to the lake by your house. Now, I don't know about you, but if I knew that before buying this property, there's 
no way I would buy it in the first place. I wouldn't want people driving through my yard, especially if I had a dog like the original poster. And you know what? The way these people have been acting as a collective is so inappropriate. They've been rude and aggressive. They've been ganging up on you just because you're the new person in the neighborhood. And they're acting like they can push you around based on their own trespassing from before you got there. So honestly, I really hope this all gets worked out because these people that you live by sound incredibly entitled. And I know if I was in your shoes, I would not want to deal with that in the slightest. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.